So how we are dealing with the private sector, with um, the financial sector, when it comes to the impact of their investments, um, uh, how it impacts actually our work, how we engage with this, uh, uh, with companies, with uh, private sector companies, and um, uh, secondly, how we actually finance impact as an uh, international organization and how we engage with impact investment. So, um, what we know is that, of course, the huge, huge economic growth and economic development, if you want, comes with uh, environmental and social issues and that's actually the concern for all of us. We also know that the businesses are able to uh, have positive impact, have create opportunities, jobs, decent jobs, well-paid jobs, and uh, uh, add value to the societies, to markets. And what we also, the, the discussion actually uh, during the panel, also to um, uh, contribute to sustainable development goals. Um, just for your information, I was visiting yesterday a meeting of the um, uh, countries which are actually a conference of the countries which are party to the um, uh, Treaty of Arms, uh, Arms Treaty uh, and uh, Arms Trade. And there was also again a discussion about how can a kind of arms trade treaty, treaty contribute to SDGs. Actually, everywhere in the world, all different different actors, different organizations are thinking about, okay, how are we really uh, going to be guided by this global agenda? And at the same time, we heard yesterday, uh, uh, I think the media were reporting that for the first time in the last 17 years, the extreme poverty and hunger is growing again. World Humanitarian Organization and FAO are reporting about that. And that's really a very bad sign, really bad sign for uh, the ambitious agenda that we have with the sustainable development uh, goals. And with this one very important promise, leaving no one behind. So that's really very ambitious and therefore we need everybody. Therefore an organization like Oxfam that says, okay, my ambition is to create a just world without poverty, engage with private sector, engage with financial sector, engage with you all together because that's a big ambitious agenda. So when it comes to the um, uh, way that private sector businesses actually act in the world, they can also have, of course, negative um, impacts. And what is for us very important as, um, um, yes, this one, uh, it's too quick, yes. What is for us important, I think, as Oxfam is to engage with the larger, actually, uh, uh, businesses, large community of the businesses when it comes to their investment. I think that was one of the panelists saying, okay, we talk about impact, impact investment, but what about the rest? the big, big, big investment. One of the things that we do for, uh, 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 for example, like uh, our, our uh, campaign on uh, um, uh, the food and beverage companies, the um, campaign called Behind the Brands, that is exactly that. Actually engage with the large companies, Unilever, Nestle, Mars, uh, Coca-Cola, really the large food and beverage companies, and uh, look at the whole value chain and um, see how they are actually performing on uh, indicators uh, uh, like human rights, like labor rights, like climate change, and publish it. Uh, uh, this is an index, and we publish that. That's one part of it is that it is published as a, uh, an instrument for consumers to understand and to value what actually these uh, companies are doing, these beloved uh, 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 um, uh, brands sometimes, uh, how they are doing. But at the same time, it is also for us the tool to engage with the companies. 
actually to have a discussion and conversation with them. And I have to say, this has been an amazing actually experience for Oxfam worldwide, globally, to be able to do at the world level with, uh, with these companies, with these large companies, but also with their shareholders, in particular in the United Kingdom and the United uh, States. We have been also able to have a conversation with their shareholders. And we have been also able really to show very, very concrete uh, uh, progress in the way they actually adjust their policies. Uh, land grabbing was already mentioned around the uh, uh, banks, but we have also other, uh, other issues around uh, climate change, uh, um, around uh, women, women's rights, so that they have really changed their policies and now, nowadays, in the second phase of campaign, we engage with them at really a, a, a practical level to see what this means in their work, actually daily work, and how this is translated uh, uh, from policy to the practice, which, which actually requires much more engagement than only at policy level, like at the new. Now, we have also very um, uh, concrete emphasis on the uh, financial sector. And um, I can uh, imagine that um, uh, banks, especially in, in, the, in the Netherlands, they have a kind of maybe mixed feeling towards uh, some of our instruments, like uh, the, the, the um, Fair Finance Guide, which I, I, I will talk about it. Um, because financial sector is for us so important because they are enablers of investments for private sector. They are enablers for actually the others to uh, invest and uh, work, for example, in emerging markets or in uh, developing countries. So one of the instruments have been, has been, for example, the bank uh, covenant. Uh, I think uh, Alexander will talk about it later uh, more in extensive. Um, we, are, we are one of the parties of that, where um, there is an agreement between uh, uh, the government, uh, finance, actually the banking sector, and uh, uh, NGOs on human rights in the value chain. This is actually very a valuable covenant, but we have to see how this is translated in practice. Again, it is very nice, nice written, we agreed on, uh, uh, on different uh, principles, but it has to be now uh, translated in the practice. Then we have this fake finance uh, guide, which is actually ranking of the banks and insurance companies, uh, companies, Eerlijke uh, Bankwijzer and Eerlijke Verzekeringswijzer here uh, in the Netherlands. And uh, we are also talking to pension funds to see uh, uh, how could we also create an uh, index for pension funds. Now, what is this about, this Fair Finance Guide? Fair Finance Guide is, as I said, a really index. It is a tool for consumers because you can, you can go and really compare your own bank and you see, okay, uh, IMG is doing a, in that area very well, ABM is doing it in that area very well, but uh, if I look together and so I think Rabobank is doing much better, so I can change my bank. I am not giving any advice, but this is really um, uh, the possibility for the consumers. Uh, we as NGOs, we can use it as a tool and really mobilize people, uh, organize popular campaigning, uh, we can do advocacy on the basis of that towards uh, politicians when it comes to rules and regulations, but also engage uh, 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 with uh, um, the financial uh, sectors, with the banks, with uh, insurance companies, and really uh, see whether we can uh, uh, create improvement through, through dialogue and collaboration. Um, so in that sense, I have to say, listening also to the panel discussion uh, before uh, a couple of minutes ago, um, I think it is not so that uh, banks or companies, they will invite NGOs to have a conversation and discuss a discussion. No, the NGOs, they invite themselves by really campaigning, putting the things on the agenda, publishing, that is the way that actually companies say, okay, let's have a talk. 
And I have been in this work, and Chris and I, we were uh, colleagues as parliamentarians, and now actually for 10 years uh, heading Oxfam Novik. And I have to say, the imitation has never come from their side. Imitation was always either I put a question, parliamentary question, and I had all the banks, and I don't know the really uh, uh, CEOs coming and saying, so, uh, Ms. Kaimi, do you know what you have asked? Yes, I know what I have asked. Or it is actually in, in you know, as, a, as an NGO putting things on the, uh, on the table. So, I don't think that that dynamic will change, honestly, just to be honest, yeah. Hmm? Agree? Okay, no, good. <laughs> so I don't think that the dynamic will change. That means we have really still a really, really, very important job to do by um, pushing that agenda, really pushing and uh, 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 pushing it to really next level. And we are doing it not only here in the Netherlands, we are doing it also in many other countries. Just to give a, uh, um, an example, we, uh, as Oxfam, know, at Oxfam with other civil society organizations, we launched their finance guides in Belgium, France, Germany, Indonesia, Brazil, Japan, Norway, Sweden, and we will continue to do it actually in more countries so that we have really a global instrument. Now that was actually the part of engagement with this larger, you know, a, a, a lar a lar engagement with this larger investment, the really big money and big, big business, where we think impact is huge, huge. If a small change happens in the policy of ING or in the policy of Unilever, we know that that is going to have enormous, enormous impact. So we will continue to do that. But at the same time, we see that for achieving um, SDGs or um, our uh, ambition of really a just world without poverty, we also need finances, just money, um, uh, to be able to support the societies, communities uh, um, which are not connected to this big investment and to be, they don't have access to this uh, 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 to the capital. So, in the, if you look at the way that Oxfam has been financing impact, because everything we do is actually about impact. We work with the poor communities, we, work, we support uh, uh, women organizations, uh, farmers, actually to improve their lives. So this is for me absolutely impact, no doubt about it. Um, how we have been actually financing it, that has been you know, no financial return, because it has been grant, you give grant, you finance projects and programs, but a large social return. In the last two, two decades, we have added to that grant instrument, which is still very much needed, um, added other also instruments, financial instruments, where we think that there, there, there is possible to have a limited financial return, but again, large uh, uh, social <coughs> return. One of the instruments have been, I think, uh, very well known for all of us here, uh, microfinance for the last 20 years. Um, uh, let's say in the Netherlands, for example, was uh, Oxfam Novib at that time called Novib, one of the first organizations actually to go with ASN together and create uh, ASN Novib fund which still exists. It started with 4 million and it is now uh, over 200 million fund. And it is very, very uh, effective instrument in uh, financing really uh, microfinance institutions in many countries. Next to that, Oxfam Novib started also own fund. We have Oxfam Novib fund, which is actually um, uh, also uh, managed by Triple Jump and we are one of the shareholders also of uh, Triple Jump together with the a ASN, where we again invest in microfinance institutions, but where the others don't go, mainly Africa, for example. We have as a really target no less than 40% should be in Africa. And that's what hurts me to see that there is a lot of talk about impact investment. 
However, when it comes to taking risks, still it is very cautious. I mean, uh, just to get, take this uh, example of uh, microfinance, again, we are one of the, I think, largest, finance, for, largest uh, uh, funds financed in Africa. And we are so tiny, small, so tiny. And nonetheless, largest. How is this possible? And I think this is really something that uh, the investors community should uh, think about. And the next step that we took uh, was, okay, we have been doing that, actually grant, microfinance institutions, but we see in some of places, let's say Nigeria, Vietnam, uh, um, uh, Uganda, countries where now there is much more uh, space for small and medium-sized enterprises to come up. And what is our role as an NGO in financing actually small and medium-sized enterprises directly? Is there any role for us? And if so, what is the role? And that was the reason for us to start with a, a pilot, uh, and that actually ended in triple I, which is actually Inclusive Impact Investing Fund. And um, it is inclusive because it is not only about the actual entrepreneur, but also about the employers, producers, customers, and communities. It is, of course, impact because it goes about, it is about poverty alleviation, and investing is more the business model, namely to invest directly in small and medium sized enterprises in uh, some of these countries. And we have learned a lot um, uh, from uh, actually this experience and I would like really to share that uh, with you, those learnings, because I think that could be actually interesting for the discussion. Um, the first thing, and I'm, I'm sure I'm not the, uh, the first one telling that, uh, this is said, uh, I think, uh, um, several, several times, but we really need to, to be able to reach really impact in those markets. We need a blended uh, uh, model of finance. Grants, loans, and long-term investments go really hand in hand. When we started, we were so ambitious and we thought, okay, we can do it all together ourselves. You know, we can do business development for the, um, uh, for the um, businesses, we can invest and we can also continue support them. Yes, we can do it, but then it is in a small size, I would say. And uh, uh, what we have actually witnessed in our conversations with the investors are, is that the investors mainly ask us or want to cooperate with us only when a business is investment ready. Is ready? Are there businesses? So I can put my resources there and I can go and invest in it. But it's actually very difficult in those countries. So we have to invest first to get investment ready, the businesses investment ready. And that part, actually the investors, they don't want to put the resources there. They don't want to invest in it. So their grant money comes in. So for us, as, as, as an NGO that actually has both possibilities, that has been possible to do. However, I think that is the, the, something that really the investors community should think about it. How are we going to finance that part to business development part, of getting businesses ready to, uh, to be invested in it? And um, further, of course, I think, yeah, you have as invest, uh, impact investor must expect really below market rate of returns. And I see that our colleagues from investment are not very convinced about that. But if you really uh, want to get to those small and medium sized enterprises in uh, Uganda, in Nigeria, in Vietnam, in uh, other places, that means that you need really to uh, uh, think about uh, expect your expectation on uh, uh, rate of returns. Yeah, I said um, from our campaigns we have learned people like lists. So that means if you make lists and you say you are here and you are there, 
then uh, um, the people will be interested in it. And we have seen that businesses, they want all to be on the top. So we had a very nice conversation with Unilever and Nestle when the Nestle became number one and Unilever was not amused. So it took a while, but then Unilever became number one and then they were really happy with our list. <laughs> so, uh, but first they didn't like it. Uh, transparency is essential, of course. Uh, reporting on say, social return as uh, well as the actual financial returns, that's again very key. I think there was a discussion about, of course, uh, reporting. And I agree, you need a kind of uh, one model which would actually help uh, everybody to understand it. And um, now, grants are very essential for program related investment, and I think that the investors need really to think about it whether they, they, should, they should create also funds which really supports the in, in impact investment part of it. Long term capital, not really for short term, term gain. Um, as I said, it uh, uh, needs also um, stakeholders in, in, in the state of uh, shareholders. You really need to think about the different, uh, different stakeholders in uh, in process. Um, now, uh, impact measurement is other thing which is really very, very uh, important. Just to show you, I was last week in Zimbabwe, we launched uh, our first um, a cooperative uh, company on seeds and as you know seeds market is one of the most difficult markets in the world uh, uh, highly monopolized uh, more than 60% of that is uh, in the hands of concentrated in the hands of few Monsanto I, I guess you know really well in Zimbabwe, a country which was actually breadbasket of, um, of Africa, uh, they have now really big, big problems because also all the national companies, seed companies, are all bought by uh, international uh, companies. Mainly soya and maize is in the market available. And at the same time, actually, they have a huge biodiversity when it comes to their actually own seeds. And this farm, this lady, Grace, she is one of the actually uh, members of the cooperative. They launched their, uh, their company. It is still actually grant when you're supporting them. I wish really that some people here stand up and say, I want to invest in this kind of actually uh, 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 companies and initiatives has enormous impact. Seeds which are also adopted to the climate change in, in, in Zimbabwe help Grace to get better income and also be empowered in, uh, in her society. But I have to say, who you talk is difficult. I don't know whether I'm ready to put my money there. So, impact investors, are you ready for impact? Thank you. <laughs>